Let me start with you first. Tell us a bit about the role that Mike Dubke was playing here in the White House as communications director, the man uh, behind the scenes. We know of Sean Spicer doing the daily press briefings. What was uh, Mike Dubke doing? David, he was in charge of the messaging operation. He oversaw that top to bottom, and this has been obviously a very chaotic time for uh, the Trump White House in terms of its press operation, in terms of its messaging. You have President Trump with a, a very adversarial, uh, openly hostile at times relationship with the press, and Mike Dubke was sort of overseeing that whole thing. This was, you know, this is a tough job for anybody because it includes having to say things that sometimes get contradicted by the president, that sometimes end up, you know, uh, where, where in a place where the story changes, where the president contradicts you a few days after um, you end up putting out a statement. And as current and former uh, uh, staffers have said, Republican staffers, that that's about the most demoralizing thing that can happen to you. So while we don't know the specific reason um, that Mike Dubke left, he put out a statement saying he was pleased to work at the White House and that there was no ill will or any, or any of that uh, sort of thing in his statement, uh, the context of this is very hard to ignore. Tim O'Brien, let me ask you about uh, being communications director in this White House for this president. You're acting as communications director. You have a, a commander in chief who's also acting as a communications right. director in his own right. How difficult is that, or how difficult does it seem to navigate that? Role? Uh, well, as an outsider looking in, yes. but having been, you know, in the midst of this too, um, uh, he he takes his own counsel at the end of the day on almost everything, whether it's communications, policy, legal affairs. He tends to default to people who are in his comfort zone, family members, or people who've been with him for a long time. And I think the net effect of that is he makes strategically unwise decisions. It's debatable whether Mark Kasowitz is the right attorney for him to have in the White House right now, given the investigations going on around him. It's debatable whether he's got the right communication staff, but at the end of the day, he often doesn't listen to his communication staff, and they've got someone who at a moment is essentially a solo pilot. You know, there was talk over the weekend that he was gonna start vetting his own tweets. And then 15 minutes after he got back to the United States, he started going after the media and the Russian probe again on Twitter, which is probably ill-advised and must have driven, driven his communication staff bonkers. Sahil, Tim brings up the, the Russia probe. We had some new reports here of the uh, role that Jared Kushner may have played in all of that. Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and, of course, advisor uh, to the president. What's the latest there and how concerned does this White House seem to be about these reports? Well, the White House, as far as we know, is standing by Jared Kushner, obviously the president's son-in-law, a senior advisor through the campaign, and an influential player in the White House, at least in terms of uh, how decisions are made, uh, at the very least in terms of personnel and organizing things like the president's foreign trip. Um, this is expected to be a major storyline going forward. I think Democrats are expected, are likely, I'm told, by several senior aides to call for investigations into this, uh, into the latest revelations that have come out in the press. I think uh, one senior aide told me earlier today, because he's family is why he's such a great target, expect this to keep going and going. A second aide tells me the investigation into Kushner means the ring is closing on the president himself. Uh, we also had new uh, reports just earlier today that the president's own personal lawyer was asked to provide some evidence. <laughs> so we don't, again, we don't know where this is going, but this is crowding out everything else that the White House wants to do. It has stalled the legislative agenda and uh, not a lot is moving, and you know it seems like we haven't heard the last of it. It's a remarkable de development to see Kushner brought into this because you know uh, I, some, uh, something bad, a, a scalp mm. um, of Kushner would be a pretty devastating thing for the White House. It yeah. involves the agenda, it involves the family, it involves a senior advisor. Tim, it's not quite a filial relationship, maybe a filial in law relationship here that the <laughs> president has with with Jared Kushner. What does he get out of it? Why why is the role that he's playing uh, so important? Why, in the midst of all of this, if there is uh, scrutiny and speculation? Uh, wouldn't the White House want to cut ties set with Jared Kushner? Well, because he knows a lot, he has a pivotal role. He's got one of the broadest profiles in the White House. He has foreign policy. He's, he's a go-to on domestic affairs. And the other interesting thing that comes into this investigation, now, Jared, there is it becomes financial. There's an issue as to whether or not um, his contact with the Russians in December involved trading uh, bank financing of some sort for a troubled project in New York for an easing of um, sanctions on Russia and its banks. And that's a clear quid pro quo. If that's part of this investigation, it really adds a whole new dimension to it for the White House. Let me end here, Tim, with just a, a contrast here. You've got somebody who's very much in Donald Trump's inner circle, Jared yes. Kushner. You've got Mike Dubke, who was not in the Trump world. He was not on the campaign, and he came into it. What lessons can be learned here four or five months into this administration about the difficulty of syncing up uh, with the Trump world if you're not a part of it, you haven't been a part of it? That if you're not family, you're, you're, you can get punted at any moment. Even uh, if you're a longstanding member of the inner circle, it's possible to get punted. There's really no safety net when you're in 
Trumplandia uh, because his loyalty at the end of the day is to himself and then to his family members and it loyalty phrase after that. Tim, 